بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المحمد رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه العزيز وفرقانه الحميد بعد عبد الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويوم يعق الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتا ليتني لم اتخذ فلانا خليلا. صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المرء على دون خليل فلينظر احدكم من يخالف او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام. Honorable brother and respected sister in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has programmed a natural propensity within us to want to be around other people, to govern our lives alongside companionship is something that has been naturally preordained for us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you want to share your joyous occasions, when you want a shoulder to lean on when you're grieving, when you're stricken with sorrow, all of these things are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are natural tendencies. But just like any other natural tendency, which has a good side to it and a bad side, this is unfortunately so, um, the line between the good side and the bad side for this particular propensity has become so blurred that its backside nowadays is taking over. And it is becoming the primary cause for why we falter. It is becoming the primary reason for why we choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good companionship, having friends alongside you, having people alongside you that can remind you of God, that can remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands, and that can keep you in check, that can keep you in line, are like free tokens to Jannah. Because these people are keeping you on line, and inshallah, as they're holding your hand in this world and guiding you through the ways of life, they're going to walk you, inshallah, right into the gardens of bliss. But on the flip side of the coin, we have certain friends which are like cancer tools. They are so destructive. They are like deviating people to such an extent where like these very friends can be on tokens of perpetual doom and eternal destruction. These people can land us right into the pits of hell without us even realizing. Which is why it's very important for us to be very, very mindful of who we choose to be around, whose company we choose to keep, what type of friends we, type of, we, we have. Because what type of friends we have will dictate what type of future we're going to have, not only in this life, but also in the hereafter. You know, subhanAllah, when it comes to the impact, the influence of company, the Prophet elucidates a very, very, very beautiful parable. Listen to this parable carefully, although it means, may seem very simple, it is one of the best ways to describe how impactful, how influential company can be. And that is the Prophet Wasallam says that, you know, a person who has company is like the individual who either goes to a musk dealer, a fragrance dealer, or a person who goes to a blacksmith. If you go to a musk dealer, even if you didn't have any direct contact with the musk, even if you didn't have any direct contact with nowadays the cologne or the perfume, but just because you went into the vicinity, you checked it out, you looked at it, you spoke to the person, you'll come back definitely smelling, reeking up some good fragrance. No, even if you didn't have any direct contact with it, but because you smelled in the vicinity that was, you went in the vicinity that was so overpowered with goodness, with sweet smell, you'll come back smelling sweet. And just like that, if you go to a blacksmith, even though you didn't involve yourself in helping him do his thing, but you'll come back smelling of a noxious odor of a foul burning smell, right? Regardless of whether or not you helped him out in whatever it is he was doing. So just like that, when you surround yourself with individuals who love goodness, who are good, and who are constantly busy, 
busy and doing good actions, whether you like it or not, you will reap of those good actions. Whether you directly involve yourself in those good actions, you will be noticed and noted as an individual who always liked to surround himself or herself with good company. Okay? And eventually those qualities will creep up inside you. SubhanAllah, and when it comes to the flip side of the coin, when you surround yourselves with evil, 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 evil people, then SubhanAllah, regardless of, the, uh, of whether or not you like the evil that they're doing, or you're doing the evil that they're doing, you'll come back reeking with the evil. So the Prophet gave us this beautiful example, and these are words to be written in gold and words to live by. These are words that will, inshallah, guide us through the ways of life, because we're constantly around people. I mean, obviously there's those of us who prefer solitude, right? Preferring solitude and wanting to be alone, wanting to be just by yourself and to yourself, that's not a wrong thing entirely, according to the Sharia. It's not completely wrong to, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons. Like, for example, the illustrious scholar of the past, Muhammad bin Ghiris Ashada, he says a very beautiful poem. He says, that if I don't find righteous company, then I prefer solitude. I prefer solitude. I'd much rather be by myself than be around somebody who, who, I, who I need to refrain from, who I need to be cautious of. Because those are fires that I don't want to play with. Those are waters I don't, I don't want to go near. So preferring solitude for the correct reasons, because of you not being able to find new company, there's nothing wrong with that. To supplude yourself for ibadah, sometimes there's nothing wrong with that. Although there is no the, um, like nature of, of, of an individual supplying themselves in a monastery and, and no connection with creation of Allah or people, that doesn't really exist. Now we are supposed to have an interaction with people. We are supposed to be but because primarily we are a nation that already does that, we are already around people, this is a quality that we really need to work on. Looking for who is worthy of my friendship? Who is really worthy of my friendship? Who do I really want myself to be around in order for me to end up in a destination very similar to this? Because believe it or not, a lot of us as influential as we are, we are easily influenced as well. As impactful as we can be, that's how in, it, that's how quickly our mind can be impacted as well. Our brain is is a it, it's a it's a functionality which receives influence through the subconscious, through the channel of the subconscious, regardless of whether we like it or we want that to be the case or not. Which is why a very beautiful advice of Yuknan Hakim, a very wise individual of the past, somebody who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an entire surah, surah Luqman in the Quran, one of his advices to his son was, Oh my dear little son, surround yourself, man, with people who, who, who incur the mercy of Allah, not people who incur the wrath of Allah. Because the mercy of Allah and the wrath of Allah are general things, you know? And, and from one angle, one perspective, or the other, they're general things. You know, the, the example of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, for example, rain. You know, if it's raining, does it only rain on like one blade of grass that deserves it? Or one individual whose lawn deserves the rain and that one person is good? No, the entire community benefits from their rain. And inclusive of, that, of, of the residents of the community are people who disobey Allah, are people who are bad people, etc. So the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes, it doesn't leave anybody, uh, you know, out. It doesn't leave anybody, you know, discarded. But for example, when the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, let's say for instance a natural disaster, are only those people who are corrupt destroyed, or are people who are good, who are pious, also destroyed as well? Right? Everybody's impacted. So which is why one of the advices of the wants is to the sun, just keep yourself away from this company, from that company, because you don't know what's coming your way. You don't know what's coming your way. You'd much rather be around people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more likely to have mercy on in this world as well, so you can keep yourself out of trouble. From this realm's perspective and from the next realm's perspective, keeping yourself out of trouble means staying out of the company of people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath may descend upon. SubhanAllah, when it comes to companionship, when it comes to friendship, what are qualities that we look for? What are 
um, you know, hallmark traits that we kind of scope an individual out for in order for us to develop some sort of a, of, 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 an, of a desire to be around this person. Are they qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would want us to look for? Or are they qualities that we just want to look for because we want them every time? SubhanAllah, it has unfortunately, very, very unfortunately become the matter. We really don't care what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would think of our criteria or our standards when it comes to looking for a friend. We just want the, uh, the next most fun person to be around, the most non-judgmental person to be around. And that person, non-judgmental, subhanAllah, sometimes we, we confuse that for somebody who's going to let me sin happily. Somebody who's going to let me sin comfortably. Let me disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in peace. And that's what we confuse non-judgmental for. Right? We look for these type of individuals. Ask yourself, who, who's with you on your Saturday nights? Who's with you on your Friday nights? Who's, who, who are you around? Who are the people? Do y'all ever do anything? Do I ever do anything around my friends or with my friends that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is invoked or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped? Or is he being mentioned in the slightest or remotest of ways? Or is he ignored and his, are his commandments ignored as we spend our nights? Is his religion something that is completely uh, inadvertently and subconsciously, not directly, indirectly scoffed at throughout the course of the night? I mean, that's what happens when you don't have friends with values of religion. You don't have to have like bland or boring friends. Religion is not meant to be bland or boring. But when it comes at the cost of nothing of, of the hereafter being invoked and everything of this materialistic realm being invoked, then that's a problem. If these type of people are people who we surround ourselves with, we're, all we're doing is just playing around, watching a movie, going to a party with, and just, just talking nonsense the whole night. If that's all we're doing, I'm not saying that some of it in its right proportions, entertainment in its right proportions, within the boundaries of Allah's limits is not okay. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if that's all we do, then that's a problem. If that's all our friends do and all our friends push us to do, and if that's all we do with people whom we supposedly love, then that's a problem. That's something we need to rectify. It's something we need to work on. What is our criteria? Our criteria of loving somebody should be for the sake of Allah. It should be that this person reminds me of God every time I see him, even if we have a good time. Even if we have a fun time, there's some sort of benefit for my hereafter that I get from this person's company. That is something that should be supposed to be our criteria. And if that's not, we need to work on it. You know, and those are relationships. Those are friendships which actually last when you respect your brothers and sisters. Those are relationships which are loyal. Those are relationships which will last throughout this whole entire life and the next life. Like the friendship between the Sahaba of the Allah and the Prophet Like the friendship one might have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is good friendship. That is a relationship worth working on, worth striving towards. You know, relationships like the, uh, the, like the one the Sahaba of the Allah had for the Prophet that is a relationship where you can see true loyalty being expressed. But nowadays, why do you think friends, for the slightest, for the pettiest, for the most trivial of little things, abandon you? When you actually need them, they are nowhere to be seen. When you are actually in need of dire assistance and help, they are nowhere to be found. Why do you think that is the case? Because the friends that we have, unfortunately the love that we have for them is manufactured love to an extent where it, it, it falls in the category of fake love. We have fake people showing fake love to us. SubhanAllah, that has become such a reality, such a disgusting reality that SubhanAllah, decades of friendship, decades of, of somewhat loyalty, supposed loyalty, one slip of the tongue, all of that can fall apart. Which is why the poet, who, the anonymous poet, who very beautifully and profoundly states, "Ibn Habiba Kahunna, Asa Ibn Kula Baghiba Kahunna, Wabu Baghiba Kahunna, Asa Ibn Kula Baghiba Kahunna." That's so true. Which means that love your friend to an extent, because one day 
Because the way the world works, they might just abandon you, they might just leave you. Out of something silly or something really ridiculous and small and petty that happened. And hate your enemy to an extent, but who, because who knows, that might actually, you might be hating him for the wrong reasons and he might actually turn out to be a good person. You might actually be hating him because he's a man of God, he's always trying to stop you from doing the right thing. But when you're actually in desire, in dire need of help, he's the only individual who will show up because of his affiliation with God. So hate your enemy to an extent as well, because someday, believe it or not, he might be your best friend. He might be the only one that shows up at your doorstep when you need help. So it's very important for us to cultivate relationships based on reality, and that reality is the hereafter. If we base our friendships off of fakeness, which is this world, and delusion, which is this world, then it will be that friendship is delusional as well. That friendship is fake as well. And we need to really rectify that. The Sahaba of the Allah, their loyalty for the Prophet was because their friendship was not built off of fluff. It was not built off of, you know what, we go have fun. We go start some riots and we go party. No, the Prophet said that he turned the Sahaba of the Allah from barbarian and really vicious and really vulgar and really obscene people into guiding stars because of his relationship with them that was lasting, that was impactful, and that was meaningful. SubhanAllah, when he came, uh, even when the Prophet said needed help, when Bush came to shove and his life was on the line, the Sahaba of the Allah were there. They were there. You know how sometimes your friend says to you, I'll take a bullet for you, man. I love you. When a, when a bullet actually is in your face, you know, he's not even there. If you call upon him, you'll never even be there. If he's there, he'll run away. He'll save, him, uh, he'll save himself. But the Sahaba of the Allah not only said those things, they didn't only say, we love your Prophet of Allah, they lived up to it. How did they say it? One time, the Sahabi, a, a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu was, um, he seemed very sad. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, you know, you look very sad. He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I, I can't, I'm always crying. I can't seem to rest. I can't seem to find any peace until I see your face. One thing is, when you pass away, you will be far in the heavens. Even if my little self makes it to heaven, makes it to Jannah, I will be with where you are. So, just help me out with this feeling. I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know if I can even enjoy paradise without seeing your blessed face. The Prophet said that he was really astonished by this question. He didn't respond right away until Allah revealed a verse of the Quran. <laughs> That that individual who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, then he will be with the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored, with the prophets, with the truthful, with the martyrs, and with all the righteous people. So the Prophet said in conclusion, answered, I love you, you will be with whom you love on the day of judgment. Ask ourselves today, you know, if we are really going to be with the individuals who we truly love, not who we say we love, who we truly love. And who are you going to wake up and sit on the day of judgment? Who's going to be LeBron James? Who's going to be one of them celebrities that we look up to and we idolize and walk, talk, and dress and do everything like that? Or is it going to be the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Whose company will actually be an impact for at that time? So the Prophet said it wasn't only said this to or told this by his companions, they actually lived up to it. They said they loved him. And when push came to shove, they put their lives out on the line for him. Abu Abayna ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu anhu, about whom the Prophet says, لِكُلِّ أُمَّةِ أَمِينٌ وَأَمِينُ أُمَّةِ أَبِيُّ عَبُّ عَبَيْنَ Right, every ummah has somebody who's trustworthy, somebody who you can rely upon. That individual from my ummah is Abu Abayna. This man, when he came to one of the expeditions where the Prophet ﷺ had a helmet stuffed in his face, nothing was working in terms of attempt to take that helmet out to Abu Abayda put his tooth out on the line. There was no dental care back then. He knew he was never getting his tooth back, but yet he went in there and with his teeth pulled it out and pulled his tooth out in the process. He noticed that there was another link of chainmail stuck in his cheek. And so he's like, all right, let me just go ahead. Knowing that he lost his first tooth, he lost his second tooth as well. You know, it's kind of like he was teeth up for the Prophet's alone. So 
Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was seeing the shower and arrows coming in the direction of the Prophet sallallahu Not only did he push him away from pushing out of harm's way, he became a human shield, taking every single arrow to the chest and to the rest of his body to preserve his protected, to protect his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is true friendship. Because it was based on the right reasons. And it's not like the Sahaba and the Prophet didn't have good moments together, they didn't laugh together. They were always laughing, joking, smiling all the time. They were always having a good time. The Prophet, whatever the Sahaba would be laughing and joking around, talking about things in their past and having a great time, he wouldn't stop them and say, Be all serious. No, he would actually come and join them. He would laugh with them. He would have a good time with them. But because their relationship was based on something meaningful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it lasted. It lasted and it was impactful and there was loyalty in there. SubhanAllah, and what, what I would like to conclude with is, that is when it comes to human beings. What we need to work on even more is establishing a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not something that plays hard to get. You know, he says in the hadith, look for me or find me. You take one step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you take two steps towards you. Walk to him, you'll run to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. And when it comes to you know, even giving us things because of our, our relationship with Him, Allah is the only individual. When it comes to asking for favors from human beings, you ask them once, they'll give it to you. The second time, they'll give it to you again. The third time, they'll get it. Or the fourth time, they'll be like, get out of my, get out of my face. When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibn Jawzi rahmanullah said very beautifully, Allah hu yaddabu heena tawakta su'alahu wa bani adama yaddabu heena yaddabu. Right, the children of Adam, Human beings get angry when you ask them. Allah gets angry when you don't ask Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry when you don't ask Him. So that is relationship goals right there. Hashtag relationship goals. The companions with the Prophet sallallahu us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our maker, that is what we are supposed to look like. And this type of a companionship, if we look for it, it's not difficult to find. It's not difficult to find, it's just that we're looking for a convenient and a delusional and a very self-pacifying way out. So that we can live this life conveniently sinning, conveniently doing whatever it is we can to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just have no one judge us for it. If we really let us let go of this delusional restriction and barrier, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us find meaningful relationships in this world with friends who will actually not be only rocks for us in this world, but rocks who will guide us to a straight path and be people who we hold on to firmly until we enter Jannah and Fidelis. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with such companionship. One ayah that I forgot to share, and I'll share now in the second khutbah, is the result of what will happen on the day of judgment when we ended up with bad company, when we ended up with foul company. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day of judgment, when we realize we've bamboozled ourselves into like you know fellowship, which is meaningful, then we will come and we will be so nervous, we'll nibble on our fingers until we just eat our hand off. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we'll do that out of nervousness because we will be just in regret, warning ourselves, having pity on ourselves that I really wish I took the Prophet Muhammad's way to live in this world. Yeah, I really wish that I didn't take this individual to be my friend. Right? But that time is going to be too late. When you look at your homies and say, Oh Allah, this is the reason why I'm, I'm here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you chose to be a humble person. It's your fault. Before we have to hear this speech from such a compassionate Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's make some hundred. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you all this ability to implement. أقول قومي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم كافة المسلمين كل ذنب فاستغفروا لكم